had the privilege of growing up in a developing country, um, a little island some 2,800 kilometers south of Toronto in the Caribbean. Uh, for me, Jamaica will always be a home uh, because of what it taught me. Like all other developing countries, the people's food culture is incredibly diverse, especially with how they treat meats. Uh, I grew up with dishes uh, that use all sorts of parts of the animal, heavily contrasting, I guess, the Western view of meats today. And being of Chinese heritage um, and descent, I grew up with grandma and she made all sorts of ch classic Chinese cuisine dishes. I remember there was chicken feet, uh, things like uh, pig intestines, oxtail, cow foot, cow tongue, chicken gizzards with sweet and sour sauce drizzled all over it, the lots of other weird uh, but delicious uh, parts. I never had to worry about antibiotics or hormones in being a part of my dishes. My family went to the marketplace where the farmers were there themselves, selling their own meats, representing themselves. A lot of the dishes uh, focus on seafood as well. And while the waters in Jamaica were a little uh, questionable, they were relatively still safe to eat. When I came um, to Canada though, that all changed. Uh, going to the supermarket felt super mundane and monotonous. Uh, the slow pace, there was no one to talk to, no cattle being casually walked around, uh, the same meats on display each and every time neatly in their little styrofoam packaging all in a row, with only a bland label slapped across it with no identifying traits. Uh, so it all felt a little disheartening. Uh, there was a disconnect, and there still is, I think, um, to how society views meat as just another commodity and not knowing where, they, where it really comes from. So I'm here today to explore why. Much like the rest of North America, Canada's meat industry has evolved to an industrial scale. Often these factory farms are extremely over overcrowded environments where animals have a reduced quality of life and whose immune systems are already weakened. To help combat this risk to disease, farmers frequently give their livestock animal feed laced with antibiotics. Today, however, uh, these antibiotics not only fight bacteria and disease, but most are administered to animals to promote growth. Every year, animal farmers feed livestock approximately 25 million pounds of antibiotics. Cattle are also given hormones uh, to speed up their gro growth, increase milk production, um, and improve the selling weight of each animal. Uh, the most common hormone is recombinant bovine somatotrophin, or RBST, which is being administered to approximately 17.2% of dairy cows at the time of this report, and which is blissfully banned in Europe and was banned in Canada. Um, until the new uh, NAFTA 2.0 deal recently, where American dairy cows can now be sold in Canada. Um, however, Canadian farmers still administer antibiotics to their livestock, and despite fears of antibiotic resistance, uh, we are currently feeding eight times more antibiotics to animals than people who are unwell. And by that notion, um, if we are consuming this meat, uh, who's to say our resistance won't build as well, um, if there are actually traces of these antibiotics in them, um, or maybe for those who are hypersensitive or actually allergic um, to these drugs as well. Um, so I went to Loblaws, which is my supermarket of choice, and which is uh, one of the higher end chain supermarkets to see if I could get any information about where they get their meat from, uh, specifically their beef. And what I found out, found out uh, sort of surprised me actually. Um, Loblaws promotes mainly two brands of meat. Uh, from what I observed, the first is a no-name brand meat whose uh, label and packaging is simple. Um, it offers safety information and the best before date uh, with name, identifier, weight, and price normally. Um, then there is a president, the President's Choice brand, 
uh, which is a private label owned by Loblaws and offers a sturdier packaging, often a blue tone or colorful labeling, uh, with a picture of the meat already prepared into a dish, which is visually attracting to um, the high, middle and high-end consumers that they target as well. Um, there's also normally a nice little maple leaf uh, uh, with a promise that the meat comes from a Canadian farmer too. And some of the, I noticed some of the no-name brands uh, starting to put a little sticker um, identifying the Canadian farmer um, as well. Uh, however, I did want to know more. Uh, was the meat actually fed drugs? Um, any antibiotics at all? Um, so I asked the butcher, um, who kindly told me he didn't know. Um, he was too busy and directed me to the store manager. Uh, so I went to the store manager. Um, they, she didn't know either and couldn't tell me a thing other than directing me to a customer relations number. Um, so when I finally got a hold of their PR department, um, I left various messages over the course of a few days with their beef specialist, Luke. Um, we never seemed to be, able to be available, even though I left a bunch of voicemails. Um, so with that being said, um, lucky for me, the fair is in town, uh, so I'm going to head on down and see if I can find out what our farmers are actually doing with the meat today. See you in a few. I'm here at the Royal Winter Agricultural Fair at the Canadian National Exhibition Grounds in Toronto celebrating its 96th year in production. Each year, farmers come from all over the world celebrating the culture, the agriculture, and showcase the best of the best of their livestock. There's tons of things to do here at the fair, such as giant vegetables, different food stalls, auctions, uh, there's different horse shows and races, and so much more to do. The fair is important, and not only does it provide entertainment and the experience of bringing the farm to the city, but it also uh, provides education uh, to the participants in the overall realm of connectivity between food, agriculture, city and country. So I'm here today to have fun but to also investigate the state and the better understanding of the meat industry in Canada. There's a number of different organizations of farmers here um, at the fair so I'm looking uh, to see for myself what it's all about. So we're here at the CMEX booth at the fair, as you can see by all the colors, is a Canadian company. CMEX Canada was launched in 1974 due to an increase in international demand in Canadian genetics. They are run by three well-established Canadian companies, AI organizations, that is artificial insemination, non-intelligence. Uh, respectively, they are WestGen, EastGen, and CIAQ, or CIAQ. They offer a variety of genetically modified sperm that is created with the uh, latest and cutting edge in genomic technology um, after decades of research, which puts them as one of the leading genetic programs in North America today. In fact, this year they have succeeded in breeding hornless bulls, uh, thus eliminating the need to dehorn calves anymore, which is often a tired and tedious process for the farmers and all actors involved. Um, they have essentially created a value-based system for the cattle, um, which gives the farmer and the client the opportunity to select and create the perfect sire for their cattle. So I'm here today with Jacob, uh, uh, here at CMEX. Uh, thank you, Jacob, for taking the time just to thank you. talk with me today. Um, so, Jacob, I just wanted to talk to you about CMEX. Uh, what do you do at CMEX exactly? Uh, so at CMEX, I work with the Jersey program, so they're the little brown cows, and I'm in charge of the product development area for the breed. Excellent. Um, uh, what qualities do you think can uh, make a healthy and profitable cow or bull uh, in CMEX's vision? Healthy and profitable for the dairy industry actually parallel quite nicely because the healthier the animal is, the more she will produce. So it's quite easy for us to breed for both areas. Now they are negatively correlated in health and production, so we try to make sure we are selecting for cows that do both. So as we look for more and more cows that do produce greater and greater, we are making sure we are making, uh, watching their female fertility, uh, the health of the animal, and the immunity of the animal. I see. Awesome. Um... So you have uh, different innovations, uh, CMEX has come up with different, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, innovations, uh, such as Immunity Plus and the Optimate program. Yes. Um, so how do the uh, benefits uh, the farmer and his or her cattle uh, these programs? First, I'll speak on Optimate. Optimate yep. is designed to create the ideal man for the cow. Every cow is different for what her needs are, I see. but it's important to design a whole program around what the farm's needs are, not an individual cow. Yes. 
start on the larger bowl. So then that basis is the bowl selection. Then after you've done a bowl selection and narrowed it down to what you would like to do there, then you can take that to determine what bowl should be used on what female. And then you create the average of that to make sure that it matches what you find. And that's what optimizing is. Cool. Um, now, I just want to talk about maybe uh, the, I guess, from a consumer standpoint, um, how does one tell um, that the beef they buy in the store could be or is a product of CMEXs itself? Um, and do you think there should be a system or classification available for the consumer um, at the retail level itself? That's a very good question. I... Personally, I guess in your opinion. No, like, because there, there's two different ways that could happen. One, it's always good for everybody to know where their product comes from. Yes. So buying from a local location where you know where it's coming from is the smarter. Or if you trust your retailer and then ask them, hey, can you tell me the farm product needs to be Then you can easily find out if you came from a CMAX client. Directly labeling it as CMAX is not the ideal strategy because our goal is to work with farmers. Of course. Yes. Yeah. 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 In the end. Yes. So then if the consumer wants to work with Well, thank you, Jacob. Um, I think that's all the time we have today. So thank you again. Thank you. Um, looking forward Hopefully to this seeing, goes well. Looking forward to seeing what CMEX does in the future. Yes. And, uh, Plenty of yeah. innovative technologies <laughs> being worked on and all for the greater good. Yes. <laughs> so, thank you so much again. So, it seems there are alternative science biotics. With companies like CMEX, we can now genetically modifiable sperm genomic sequence and decrease the likelihood of certain diseases or modify certain expressions and traits. With this technology in play, farmers will be able to sell meat free from antibiotics and hormones, and instead of pumping each generation of cattle full of drugs, they could rely on genetics uh, to keep their livestock safe. I decided to dig a little further and place 10 calls to different butchers around the city, both high and low end, and they all relatively told me the same thing more or less. Um, that all their cattle and beef uh, was raised in, on, by Ontario farmers and had not been genetically modified in any way. Uh, most companies um, had not even heard of CMEX anyways, which sort of surprised me since they were one of the main sponsors of the fair. Um, and only one uh, butcher was willing to disclose that his meat uh, had been um, given antibiotics at the source, but he decided to defend his statement by saying that it was there for immune boosters and it would have been out of the cow system at the point of sale. But I believe with the right guidance, uh, genetic selection technology is part of the meat industry's future, and um, I certainly see no downside to it yet. Uh, but there is a lot of room for improvement and views to shift. Um, to quote a favorite chef of mine, uh, Dan Barber, uh, in the rush to industrialize farming, we have lost the understanding implicit since the beginning of agriculture that food is, food is a process, a web of relationships, not an individual ingredient or commodity. My name is Jeffrey Chin Loy. This has been IL3 of the Supermarket Tour. Thanks for listening.